So when we're working with 3D, uh, we can make our own shapes and models in a uh, 3D program, or we can also access uh, a bunch of different 3D models online. And some of them are free, some of them are paid for, and uh, you know, it's varying levels of quality. I wanted to show a few places where you could grab some 3D models and also how to prep them for Adobe Aero. So um, this is um, a project called Scan the World, and there's actually a lot of institutions who are scanning real 3D objects, and you can grab models this way. So I'm already, um, this is free. I'm going to click on this. I'm actually logged in already, so you do have to make an account, uh, and I'm just going to download Another website you go to is free3d.com, and you could see some of the models here. Maybe I'll pick something a little bit more contemporary. This is the Cybertruck, and this will be a good um, model to contrast with because it's uh, it's a little bit uh, more boxy. Um, so I can already tell it's going to be fewer polygons than the other model. Um, there's also Adobe Stock, and this there's a 3d uh, portion of this where you can just search for 3d elements um yeah here we go 3d assets and i was just digging around for some stuff but you can you can go in there and typically i think you have to pay f like a subscription fee or something so these are um do require purchases but it's a good um a good place to look into a lot of other places too online if you just want to search for free 3d models um, you can find some resources that way all right so in cinema 4d let's open up those 3d models that we just downloaded i'm going to open up uh there's uh two file formats that we downloaded stl and dot obj these are 3d file formats that uh we can open up in uh, cinema 4d thankfully and those are kind of um some widely used formats. So if you are able to find files in those types, um, that will be good. So here's my head of David, and let's open up this Cybertruck. Uh, this is an OBJ, and you'll have some import options. Uh, this thing, I realized, has, co has come in with a stage, and there's, there's my truck. It's just in this curved stage. So if we open this up, you can see all the different parts in here there are some materials here which doesn't look like they came in correctly which sometimes happens um, but we actually need to probably put new, different materials on for arrow so we, and we can just stylize this or, or do something simple the main thing i want to show is how to get these 3d objects in so i i think there's this plane here that we don't need and uh you know there's some other more complicated things here but again i want to show like just a simple way to get into this um, one thing I want to look at is the number of polygons to get a sense of um, what uh, performance will be like um, as we go through this. Um, so if you want to see how many polygons there are, you can click on the object, uh, go to object up in this menu, uh, uh, object information, and it should tell you this is 7,777 polygons. Um, that's going to be OK for Adobe Aero. Um, and if we want to get a sense of exactly how many, or a better sense of visually what it looks like, we can go up to display. And instead of the default shading up here, we'll go to shading with the lines. And you can get a sense of how the, this geometry was created in you know, areas where it, we, it's not super smooth in some areas. And, um, but that kind of actually goes with the aesthetic of this truck. Uh, let's go to the other file, and we're going to see something different when we go and click on the object and go look at the object information oh it's over 1 million polygons now that's crazy that I probably don't want to bring this into Adobe Arrow like that uh, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because I want to see what what level of detail there is go to display and look at the lines there, it's so dense that it's creating this mesh. And so it's really smooth, but it's, a, it's so many polygons that, again, I think Adobe Arrow is going to choke on this. I'm going to turn this off so it can run a little bit faster. Um, OK, so we again, we have to make this decision. Uh, detail, quality, size versus performance. Um, maybe I don't need this level of realism. Maybe I can uh, dial into something or abstract it. Um, one tool you could use here, I'm going to do a search for it, Shift-C, is uh, 
polygon reduction. Now there's two of these here. I'm going to select the one that isn't that's light blue. And this I want to bring in as a child underneath of the model. So this is going to affect that. So again, parent up at the top and then a child underneath. And we click on this polygon reduction and we have we're able to uh, change the reduction strength and the mesh factor. So let's see if we can crank this up a little bit and what the effect is. Um, now, because there's so many polygons, I anticipate that this might run really slow. Um, so again, maybe you don't want to find the, the craziest model and you can see it's reducing the polygons from over a million to 54,168. That still might not be uh, desirable. Maybe that's actually still a little bit too high. But you can see that that reduction took place and it's a little bit less smooth. I might be able to get away with that from a quality perspective. Um, Again, I want to think about what my, my scene is like, um, what what Adobe Arrow can take. It seems that Adobe Arrow can take um, what, around 130,000 polygons right now. Um, uh, I might just go a little bit further just to show you levels of uh, the different levels you can take this. Let's go to 98%. Um, it's going to reduce even more. And so 21,667. Okay. We're going to see a drop in quality, but again, maybe this is, this is a level of abstraction that you want. Um, after this, I'll just show how to prep this. Okay. Again, to get this ready for uh, Adobe Arrow, let's um, export this in FBX. Let me just put a material on here to, to texture it. Um, let's do something a little colorful. We're in the color channel here. <clears throat> Maybe we'll give it a little bit of a bluish color. Um, okay. So we got this on here. Let's go up to export, export as FBX. Uh, we'll use the default settings. We'll throw it into here. It might take a little bit of time. Again, uh, it's processing this. Um, you can see it's running a little bit slow. We can get into Adobe Arrow and kind of get started. Um, I made a scene called David and eventually what I want to do is add that asset um, once it comes in. It looks like it's still processing. So again, it could take some time doing the polygon reduction here. Um, one thing you could do to speed this up, because I think it's, it's running a calculation, is you could actually go in and change the current state to object. Now this will make it so you, it'll be harder to uh, edit this, but you can see it's, everything is contained here. And then I think I could just delete this. And that way I think it, it might run a little bit faster when keep doing the polygon reduction calculation. Okay, um, but I should have that asset in my folder now. Let's go to, to add it, FBX. Let's see what that looks like. Will it come in? Yes, it did. It got that material on it. Um, so we, we can go and see what that's like. So yeah, this is this is bringing in one asset again. I reduced the polygons here. You can see that there's some some you know uh, sort of abstraction there, but uh, it's it's at least running here, and that's that's fine. So I you know I can get 3D models and add them in here. I don't have to model them myself because that's actually quite intensive, um, and it's quite difficult actually. All right, let's go back to Cinema 4D and get our uh, cyber truck here. Um, maybe I want to, maybe I'll just delete all these materials because I think they're not working properly. Um, you'll see that it resulted in some missing materials here, but uh, let's just do something really basic. I just need like a, maybe a black material. 
Um, and maybe we'll add a little bit of reflectance on this. One thing we can do is uh, if uh, re the specular is kind of the level of shine off of this, and we can, um, we can do things like edit that, like make it shinier um, by adjusting what that looks like and kind of see what that, that is like. You could also um, add layers of reflection. So this actually makes it even more reflective. Um, you can see that came in as a layer one, and I can adjust the reflection strength. Maybe it does, doesn't need to be that reflective. And you can also pull down the, the power of that layer. This is the default that we had earlier that we were playing with. Um, yeah, so let's do that. And maybe this is what we do for the, the glass. I'm going to see if uh, now what happened here is that some of these objects Let's see, that what looks like it went on the body cube. I think that there's some selections here that are like the window uh, or the, like for example, the wheel. Maybe we can just get away with a, a really dark, uh, non-reflective material. Maybe it's just, again, going to the right channel. Maybe it's just the dark black. And I, we should be able to um, either drag them here or we can drag them on. Uh, on the, la the layers or the objects here. So you can see, I could also do something like this. I think that will go, that must have been, yeah, the wheel in the back. So um, I could go and s further select these um, if I really wanted more detail. Uh, but in the interest of time, actually maybe this, this material that I made earlier, maybe this is that just the shiny, a generic shiny material that's kind of grayish. And I'll just use that instead of having to select all the uh, planes and, and uh, figure that out, I might just use that on most of it. And I think you can see there are a few parts the bumper didn't get textured. So maybe the bumper gets that. So th these represent the textures and maybe we'll just make sure everything gets something, something of, a, of a texture. And uh, yeah, and I think there's some other elements up here that are like to control the car, which we I don't think we'll need. But I think this, if I just take a, a preview of this command R, you know, I didn't again I didn't do the window selection, but I just want to get this out kind of quick into my file. So uh, all right, I have this all set up. Let's export this as an FBX. out into that same folder. And that one was a little bit quicker because we didn't have all those polygons. Um, I guess we'll just keep it in the same file. It's kind of a weird montage of things. We've got some classical Renaissance art and we've got this uh, truck, this new cyber truck. Maybe you were just rotating it around, okay. But the idea is, hey, we've got our 3D, 3D objects that we've pulled from the internet, and you can grab them, and this is just a workflow for you to, uh, to try out so you can get more assets into Adobe Arrow.